Mr. Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I concur with the Prime Minister on her remarks and Paddy Ashdown and make the point that all of us collectively have a responsibility to make sure there is no intimidation in our public life? Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister delayed the doomed Brexit vote last year on the promise of written concessions from Brussels. Prime Minister, where are they? Yeah. Can I say to the right honourable gentleman, I set out the position in my first response to the leader of the opposition. I suggest he should have listened to it. Uh, Ian Blackford. We're, we're used, Mr. Speaker, not to getting an answer, and there we have it again. What the Prime Minister promised was that we would get written concessions, yeah. that Parliament would have the opportunity to vote on that, and nothing has materialised. A month has passed, yeah. and nothing has changed. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, Last night, the Prime Minister suffered another humiliating defeat. When will the Prime Minister face the facts? There is little support for her deal or no deal in this House. The new year began without concessions. The Dublin talks failed without concessions. The debate on her deal restarts today without concessions. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister is frozen in failure, asking MPs to write a blank cheque for her blindfold Brexit. MPs should not be debating without the full facts. Is it this, or when are the concessions, not just clarifications? When would the Prime Minister guarantee that this House will see the full details before we start the debate this afternoon? The Prime Minister. As I said uh, in response to his first question, I set out the position earlier. I referenced, as he will know, the conclusions of the December European Council, which went further in relation to the issues that I had raised with the European Council than they had gone before, and those have legal status, but we are, of course, working further on those uh, those issues. But the right honourable gentleman can't get away from the fact that if he wants to avoid no deal, he has to be willing to agree a deal. The deal that is on the table, the deal that is on the table that the EU has made clear is the only deal, is the one that the United Kingdom government has negotiated with the European Union, and if he really wants and is concerned about ensuring that we can look ahead with a bright future across the whole of the United Kingdom, he should back that deal. 